I would like to say a word of personal greeting to all of you first before I open the scriptures. It's a great privilege and delight for me to come back to the state of Michigan. I remember the time that we held the crusade here, I think about 1953, and we built a building in downtown Detroit, and it seemed to me to be huge crowds of people, but I have read the newspaper clippings of that time and the tabernacle only seated 12,000. I don't know how many people are here tonight because they are, you're counted as you come in by turnstiles, but I know one thing, there's far more people here tonight than could fill Madison Square Garden in New York City. And I remember when we were at Madison Square Garden, we thought we had wonderful audiences when it was filled. And here, this audience tonight would fill any auditorium in the United States. Now tonight, I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. And as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. And he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Saul, Saul, Bill, Mary, Susie, Jim, John, why persecutest thou me? Why don't you live for me? Why are you rejecting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And Jesus answered and said, Arise and go. Arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. Now the people with Saul that day could not see this light. They could only hear a voice. And Saul was on the ground trembling. Now notice he is a very brilliant man, a PhD, a professor at the university, very religious persecuting people that were followers of Christ because he thought in so doing he was serving God. And all of a sudden he's blinded by a light. He falls on the ground and is absolutely transformed by that experience so much so that time after time he tells that experience. This is what happened to Saul. A man that was the furthest from the kingdom of God of anybody you could think of. Guilty of persecution and torture and even murder. He's the one that met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Or Charles Colson, who was called the hatchet man at the White House. Disillusioned filled with guilt, was given a book by Tom Phillips, the president of Raytheon Company, one of the great corporations of America, who himself had come to Christ at Madison Square Garden. And he got this book, Mere Christianity, by C.S. Lewis, and he began to read it. And while reading that book, he came to know Christ. And now he goes up and down the country telling how Christ has transformed his life. And he wrote a book called Born Again. It can happen to you. Just like that. With some people it may take a few days or a few weeks or a few months for them to really become convinced that they need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But with others, it happens just like it did with Saul. It can happen with you tonight because, you see, God does not promise any tomorrows to those that are outside of Christ. There is no guarantee that you'll get home tonight safely. The Bible says, come to Christ now. Come while you can. 
Now is the accepted day. Today is the day of salvation. You may never have another moment like this.